I'm just getting everything started on YouTube and then we will be ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it looks like we are good. Whenever you're ready, Robert. Okay. Um, I'd like to go ahead and call to order the meeting for Planning and Zoning Commission on Tuesday, October 27th of 2020. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Port Aransas. Oh, there we go. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Port Aransas Planning and Zoning using an electronic medium will conduct the regular Planning and Zoning meeting on Tuesday, October 27th. 2020 beginning at 5 p.m. No meeting will be conducted at City Hall. A temporary suspension by the Open Meetings Act to allow telephone or video conference of public meetings has been granted by Governor Greg Abbott. These actions are being taken to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 by avoiding meetings that bring people into large group settings in accordance with section 418.016 of the Texas Government Code. Um, all right, call together. We'll go ahead and open up citizens' comments and reports. Uh, it looks like we've got a couple folks. Uh, Kathy Fulton on the line. Did she want to speak at this time? So, Kathy, it, it won't let me unmute you. You have to unmute Hello? yourself. Hello? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, yes, hi. This is Kathy Fulton, and I'm... Uh, actually now move back to Tarrant uh, here in Port Aransas. Anyway, um, I would like to start by saying something real quick and up front. This is it from the city charter and still is valid. Even Grunewald. And Join the meeting. It says, B, duties and powers of the board for the planning and zoning board. The board shall, number one, make and recommend to the city council a master plan for the orderly development of the city. The board shall not less than every five years review and recommend to the city council amendments to the master plan of the city. What I'd like to say about that is it says at a minimum of every five years, but it does. It also means that you can do it as often as you think it's really necessary. Number one. And number two, it's actually about the only power the P and Z really has. It's up to you to do the master plan and then present it to the city, not the other way around. Um, and I think that everybody needs to get a hold of the city charter and start reading through it a little closer. Number two, obviously, I'm calling about the Rock Cottages Laughing Horse Plat. Um, I'm going to start by saying... It's in Old Town, and it seems like, again, there's been a complete disregard both by Jim Urban and Devin Balka, Balka, however you say his name, for anything that is anything Old Town. They did not listen to consider our concerns, went ahead and maxed out the space anyway. God forbid that there should be a possibility of maybe having a park area in this development we already know it's going to look like the other as bad as the other stuff that is just running up and down 11th street and it's just going to cheap out old town and again this should be considered uh the other thing i would like to say about all this is um i uh there were two second amended notices that came out with this, uh, with this, uh, um, with the agenda, and to, they were done yesterday. How do you expect everybody to be able to review this and have any conception of what is going on with this plan, much less the other plans, when you keep changing it at the very last minute? It doesn't work that way, and it is it doesn't allow the proper way for this P and Z board to properly review and make sure that everything fits in. And then I would also like to say that I have questions about how that common drive on lot one, block two, can be platted into this lot one, block one, 
because it almost seems to me that that's, that's basically doing a variance to put a comment when you haven't really finished planning out the other property. It doesn't seem, you know, to put a common drive there, it, it's, it's very misleading. Um, and there appear to be missing documents, in fact, on uh, this particular agenda item dealing with some questions that were raised about some of the stuff in the packet. Again, this packet is not, uh, it's not complete and it's, it's not right to keep doing this where y'all do this, allow this last minute stuff where no one's got time to really review. And I know that Mr. Adams is going to say it fits into our codes, but I disagree. I don't think it does. And it certainly is not within the spirit of the old town resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, did we have anybody else? The other people on the line are Stephen Grunald with Urban Engineering and Alex Harris with Rock Cottages. Okay, so no more citizen comments? No. Okay, at this time, we'll uh, go ahead and close that, move on to the public hearing. Um, <clears throat> wow, that's long. Yeah. Okay, um, the public hearing. The Port Reyes Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing on the following. Please limit to comments to three minutes or less. Uh, 3.1 FPLT 20-2494, William R. Ellis Subdivision, Block 2, Lots 2, 3, and 4, which is 0 0.08585 acres being replatted of Lots 1 through 11, Block 3, the Captain H.M. Teller Track, an 11.0 foot wide strip of land between the Captain H.M. Teller Track and Lot 1, Block 3, as shown on a map made for J.M. Ellis, recorded in Volume 5, page 23, Miscellaneous Map Records of Nueces County, Texas. A 1,650 square foot tract of land described as Track 2 in document number 877769, Deed records of Nueces County, Texas, together with the remaining 261 foot by 11.67 foot strip of land of an 11.67 foot by 591 foot strip of land described in a quick claim deed as recorded by volume 322, pages 197 through 198. Deed records of Nueces County, Texas said 0.858 acre tract of land being all of a 0.855 acre tract of land described as exhibit A, recorded in document number 2004023517. Official public records, Nueces County, Texas, said 0.8585 acres being the same 0.858 acres described in a warranty deed with vendors lien from Praise Property LTD, a Texas limited partnership to PAFW Holdings, LLC, a Texas limited liability company recorded in document number 20190034986, said official public records applicant PAWF Holdings, LLC, property location is 722 Tarpon. Item 3.2, FPLT 20-2534, Cinnamon Shore Unit 3, Part of Cinnamon Shore 2 PUD, 6.10 acres being a replat of Lot 1, Block 1, Lot 31, Block 1, Lot 33, Block 1, Lots 26, Block 2, Lot 32, Block 2, and Lot 22, Block 5, Cinnamon Shore South Unit 1. Part of Cinnamon Shore's 2 PUD, a map of which is recorded in Volume 69, pages 144 through 148. Map records of Nueces County, Texas. Applicant is Mustang Island Development Inc. Property location is 5800 Highway 361. Uh, item 3.3, FPLT 20-2535 Rock Cottages Townhomes, Lot 1, Block 1, Units 1 through 28, and Lot 1, Block 2, 3.41 acres of land being a portion of Lot 6, Block 32, all of lot seven, block 32, and a portion of lots four and five, block 37, state land surveys on Mustang Island, 
Nueces County, Texas said 3.41 acres being comprised of a 0.782 acre tract of land described in a special warranty deed contribution from Williams Airline Partners LTD with 32% interest in Oceanic BC LLC, 68% interest to Laughing Rock LLC as recorded in documents number 2018013901, official public records of Nueces County, Texas and tracks one, two and three described in a special warranty deed with vendors lien from 503-G LP to Laughing Rock LLC recorded in document number 2018015355 of the said official public records applicant, Laughing Rock LLC, property location is 603 Avenue G. Uh, I'm assuming we don't have any comments on these? No, we don't have anybody on the line. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and close the uh, public hearing, move on to unit four, which is items for consideration. We're going to take Discuss and take action or pass any of the following. Item 4.1, discuss and take appropriate action on the minutes from Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting on Tuesday, September 29th, 2020. Has anybody gone over those, seen any corrections? I'll make a motion to approve, Nick. I'll second. Thank you, Clark. Call the roll. Garrett Kipke? Yes. Clark Smith? Yes. Nick Lorette? Yes. Robert Tip. Yes. Motion carry. Item 4.2. We're going to discuss and take appropriate action on FPLT 20-2494, William R. Ellis Subdivision, Block 2, Lots 2, 3, and 4. Applicant is PAWF Holdings, LLC. Property location, 722 Tarpon Street. Uh, Rick, you wanna go ahead and kind of start us off on this one? Yeah. Hey, Rick, you're on mute. Yeah, give him a second. Unmute, sorry. Um, yes, sir. So Nicole, if you'll pull up the exhibit that kind of shows the layout, but while she's doing that, this is the, uh, this is actually a continued uh, effort towards redeveloping the Fisherman's Wharf uh, flats area, the, the Ellis property that's there. Uh, so this this is a, this is the, uh, the the property probably best described as the Giggity's track where, where Giggity's restaurant uh, currently is located. Uh, but that track that encompasses Giggity's and rest of that area. Uh, is made up of 11 lots and this uh, uh that building has now been uh, uh we've been advised that that building will be demolished um uh, here in the very near future i think that the 31st from my understanding although certainly it's it's not an obligation for them to tell us but uh, our understanding is the 31st will be giggity's last day of operation and and demolition will occur sometime in the near future so um this replat and consolidation of the 11 lots into the three that you see on the exhibit before you uh, is contingent upon uh, that demolition taking taking effect. Um, and also, uh, there was one other item with the utility response, which you'll note that the gas department did uh, uh, ask that a gas easement remain that's identified in one of those other exhibits that you have. So. Um, that's the action you have before you is again, a consolidation of the, the 11 lots into these three. And um, again, subject to uh, the removal of those buildings prior to uh, recording of the plat if approved. So, uh, and retention of that gas easement. Um, that's, that's, really, that's really it, pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't have nor would we be obligated to have a development plan at this point? So it's simply a, a replatting of the 11 lots into the three. And, and what is staff's position? Staff recommends approval. It was, uh, like I said, subject to those uh, two, uh, two requirements. 
uh, the reviewing engineer uh, found that it, it was in conformance um, and uh, was in agreement as well. Anybody have any questions? We do have the reviewing, I mean, we do have the uh, applicant engineer on, on the line if you have any questions. I, I, Y'all know me, I don't like to dive in too deep uh, if I've got the answer, but uh, Craig, you're, the, the first comment, city staff will determine if the existing building will satisfy the minimum building line and requir requirements from the new lot lines. Is that just while it exists or what's the purpose of that statement? Uh, they, as you'll note on there, they, uh, they added in build lines uh, 20 foot uh, on the Tarpon Street, 15 on the other. Uh, I, I think they put that back to our, our uh, to staff to, to look at and see if it was in conformance with our, our, our zoning setbacks. And, and certainly it is. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions, guys? Comments? So quick question, kind of tying into what Nick was talking about. Is there no rear building setback line? Uh, there's not one shown on the plat. I mean, I'm assuming there is one. Yeah, if, if, if ever a line is not shown on the plat, then it defaults to that zoning district and the requirements, uh, which in most instances, barring any adjacency to an alley, uh, would, would by default be 10 foot. And again, keep in mind that, that it is somewhat determined by the, the configuration of the lot. Uh, again, if the lot is, is of such a nature that it could later be subdivided and the configuration, you know, could make that frontage on Tarpon uh, or theoretically on, on, uh, on, uh, on Cotter, then, then that could change. It's, it's based on the, the configuration of the lot, but but barring that, it would it would default to a ten foot if that were the, if that were to be determined to be the rear. Seems to me like can y'all hear me okay? Yep. Uh huh. <clears throat> it seems to me like this is kind of going against the grain of the general trend of what goes on in Port Aransas, Texas these days. Is it's taking little lots and turning them into big ones rather than. <laughs> you know, uh, the other way around um, is, is I guess that's because the end use would most probably be fewer structures with more dwelling or rental spaces, I suppose, or it, something Again, like that. I, I agree with you that the trend is usually to, to, to cut a parcel into, into more lots rather than consolidating into fewer. But uh, again, we, we just simply hold it up against the conformance to the the platting and, and uh, uh, I, I do suspect it has again some bearing to what they propose to do in the future uh, that whatever they did would, would cross over building lines and it may be a little bit more uh, maybe a little bit easier to identify you know the separations if that's what they were you know would propose to do we we simply don't know because we don't have the development plan right. <clears throat> but keep in mind what yeah what, whatever uses of course would have to conform to the c2 zoning that uh which is, is is obviously a pretty liberal zoning although it does fall into the uh the cz2 overlay zone so there's some additional restrictions uh, pertaining to height and some other things because of that overlay uh, i'd like to just remind anybody if they want to make a motion to make sure that the uh conditions for the teardown and the gas easement remain. Do I have anybody willing to make a motion? I'll make a motion, Nick. Uh, okay. Make a motion that the commission recommends approval to council for FELT 20 dash 2494 Williams R. Ellis subdivision block two, lots two, three, and four. Contingent upon the uh, subject to the five foot utility easement for existing gas main. 
I think that's it. And the removal of the existing building. And the removal of the existing structure? Yes. Okay, and, and the removal of the existing structure. Thank you, do I have a second? <clears throat> I'll second. Second, call the roll. Clark Smith? Yes. Garrett Kipke? Yes. Nick Lorette? Yes. Robert Tips? Yes. Motion carries. Item uh, 4.3, discuss and take appropriate action on FPLT 20-2534, Cinnamon Shore South Unit 3, part of Cinnamon Shore 2 PUD, Applicant Mustang Island Development, Inc., property location 5800 High Highway 361. Uh, Rick, you want to go ahead and... Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is, again, one of these uh, <coughs> relatively frequent replats of a, of, a, of a large planned unit development such as Cinnamon Shore. Uh, so as the, as the narrative explains, this, this takes several lots and removes what was previously a, a, a radius that it had, expands one, uh, one lot slightly, reduces another one. So it's, it's basically just a, a general reconfiguration of a few lots all keeping within the, the, uh, the pretty significant flexibility that's afforded a planned unit development, uh, again, which allows for residential mixed use and, and so on and so forth. So this is, uh, like I said, generally we see this as a result of, of changing market trends and, and either a, um, a larger, uh, building a larger estate size lots or is, is, is a, and Garrett mentioned earlier, usually a, 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 a configuring smaller lots to uh, uh, allow for a smaller type product out there. So that's that's pretty much basically what you see. So it's it's a fairly straightforward replant. The reviewing engineer did have have some comments simply that related to the plat notes as to who was going to maintain the lots. The it's referenced that uh, some of the lots the HOA they they reference lots that the HOA will maintain. They also reference lots that will be retained uh, as access and utility type easement lots. And so uh, he just uh, wanted to ensure that those lots were referenced properly, that any of these lots as they changed were referenced properly properly in the notes, but wasn't, uh, wasn't terribly significant in that respect. Um, so again, uh, a fairly straightforward replat that we see pretty often in these PUDs. Uh, uh, all the comments were reconciled there was, uh, again, on this one, there was a note. Um, again, uh, our gas department's been doing a really good job lately. So they do just, uh, they chimed in, wanted to make sure that they do comply with all their gas provisions, which is placement of lines and things of that nature. Um, and so that, uh, that comment was made by our gas department. And so uh, uh, we just would simply want a note uh, or a, a component of the motion when, when made that does recognize it uh, must comply with the, uh, the city gas gas department requirements. And with that, staff recommends approval. And we did yeah. receive revisions uh, based on Hanson's notes there. Yeah, and that, and, and again, uh, thanks Nicole for that because what uh, one of the, the, the folks that commented, you know, talked about changes. Uh, a, a lot of times these changes come in uh, or like I said, these, these type of notes that just basically confirm that they change those plat notes, which uh, the planning and zoning commission to determine whether that was significant enough. Uh, but, but every time that, that comes in, uh, our new system allows for Nicole to, to, to put that into the, the public record immediately. And anybody that's requested that information, uh, they, it, it appears as though it's a change to the packet. It, in a sense, it's an addition, uh, but it gets published just every time and it goes out as a change. So that's, that's, what, that's what, when they say that, you know, these change at the last minute, those are the kind of things that, uh, that would result in, in, in that change. Keep in mind that, that anything of any significance in your opinion, in the Planning and Zoning Commission's opinion, uh, that you felt wouldn't give you ample time to review for, you know, proper deliberation, uh, you know, you would be, you know, free to address that at, at the meeting and, and, 
and pass on the item. Of course, if it's a plat, we've got timelines, uh, you know, so it, 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 it may constitute, you know, disapproving a plat. Um, but that's always at your discretion. So like I said, yes, because of our, actually it's an enhancement to our previous system. So we, you know, we're able to up, up, upload these documents that would normally be a handout uh, you know, into the system as soon as they're received so that it serves, uh, you know, it serves public notice. Everybody that has an interest in that packet gets it. And it does appear as a change, but I just wanted to clarify what exactly that was. Uh, and if there ever there was one of those ones that you got at the last minute, uh, just as the same with a handout. If you didn't feel comfortable, you could always, uh, we, you know, we could deal with that at the meeting. So I, I'm sorry for taking so long, but I wanted to, this was a good segue into explaining that, uh, that comment that you received earlier. Thank you. Did any of uh, my fellow commissioners have questions or comments? No. Mm. Do I have a motion with the uh, addition that the gas regulations all conform? I'll make a motion to approve final plat 20 2534 with the uh, addition, uh, I guess, subject to complying with the uh, city of Porter Aransas Gas Department comments. I have a second. Second. Nick. Thank you. Call the roll. Nick Claret. Yes. Garrett Kipke. Yes. Clark Smith. Yes. Robert Titt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. Item 4.4, .4, discuss and take action on PPLT and FPLT 20-2535. Rock Cottages, Townhomes, Lot 1, Block 1, Units 1 through 28, and Lot 1, Block 2. Applicant is Laughing Rock, LLC. Property location is 603 Avenue G. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commission. So um, this uh, is a plat that obviously you had seen once before that we sent back to the drawing board uh, uh, for uh, for a, for a density check. And again, there were some issues re with respect to, uh, um, to setbacks and some other things. And, and so rather than uh, uh, it was withdrawn and, and, uh, and reworked and now as a product that, uh, you know, is, is a result of that, uh, the, the, the plat does plat two lots. Uh, one lot that of course is, is probably the, uh, the one of, of bigger interest is the one that would create 38 townhouse lots, um, the, the Laughing Rock product. Um, 28. So that's, uh, that's what you have. Uh, like I said, that is the plat you have uh, before you. Uh, the calculations uh, are there. And again, this, uh, this, this plat prompted a, a, a change in our procedures that uh, really uh, uh, we think is a good one. And that is a, a, a on any project really of, of any of, of more than a couple of units, we do require uh, a density calculation and, and, and look at it um, you know, uh, pretty closely. Because when you look at a piece of property, the, the, the density is um, excluding roads and drives. Um, uh, well, actually the roads and drives need to be excluded from the, the, the land calculation that results in the density. So like I said, so, uh, what you have here is, is a project that uh, the density was reviewed. We have the proper setbacks that we wanted off Avenue G. Uh, there was a question in the public comments regarding the, uh, the dedicated access, which actually is on lot one, but it is an access. So it's, uh, that wouldn't be included in the calculation with respect to density on lot two. Um, uh, but it does provide, uh, like I said, but because it is a dedicated, uh, uh, it is a dedicated, uh, a dedicated access easement. It it, it certainly is uh, is appropriate, um, regardless of, of, of where it's located. So, uh, 
I think we uh, we also have the uh, the project engineer uh, Stephen Grunwald on the line, uh, and Alex as well, uh, and and the developer himself. So that's uh, that's that's basically it. It uh, like I said, uh, there was about nineteen thousand five hundred and twenty six square feet of drive and roadway uh, that had to be removed from the, the total land calculation. And when you do the math, that would allow for the 28.1 uh, units, uh, obviously round down. So uh, like I said, the density is, uh, is that that uh, is within our, our development guidelines. Uh, there was also a reference to uh, uh, Old Town and, and uh, I think the term that was used was, was the spirit of, of development, the problem one that staff has is we don't have the luxury of determining what, what that spirit is. We simply have a set of rules that, you know, council has given us uh, and hence given, given you. And so staff simply needs to compare what's submitted to us with those, those rules and uh, make, make the best recommendation we can based on, on those rules. So um, with that, the, uh, the, this has been reviewed uh, and reconciled by, uh, again, our, our reviewing engineer uh, found that it was in conformance with our, our ordinance. And so staff recommends approval. Thank you, Rick. Uh, anybody have questions? We've got Steven and Alex here on the phone. I think it was previously mentioned to add just, uh, you know, there is no access that uh, will be derived off Avenue G. So the access uh, is, is internal. And there's a plat note to that effect. Right. Um, there's also a plat note, if you'll note, that uh, you know, there's going to be four uh, on-site parking uh, spaces provided per unit. Hey, Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can. I just uh, not question it, but uh, the building setbacks off of, uh, I guess it's not off of anything, but what is the, uh, I see the 15 feet off of G and then uh, I guess it doesn't matter because it's a side yard setback. So I, I keep thinking we've got access over there. So I'll be quiet. I, I was, I was thinking that we were on 12th and I think that every time and then I look at it. So I'll, I have no question on the setbacks. Okay. And these, these streets are still platted to go, uh, to be built over, effectively over people's property lines, am I correct? Yes, sir. There's a uh, access and utility easement that uh, will run across the front uh, of these units. And the roadway and uh, public utilities will be included in that access and utility easement. So, so, so let's say like whoever owns unit one and say unit 17, their property line effectively goes to the middle of that of that that street or right away, am I right? Correct. I don't, I, that's not necessarily true there. Uh, right there, there's a 12 foot. Yeah, right. there's an well, easement, there's, but if you take units 17 and 27, that is that's true. That's word, yeah. They part the road. Oh, the, I, I see, I see the on line. The north, yeah, on the north side. Yeah, I see the line now. So why oh, is there that strip of common area in between unit one, unit 17? Unit 17 and 27 front each other. Right. Um, unit one fronts the back of unit 17. So we didn't need to include uh, the additional space for access and utilities across the backs of those lots. So we just kept it uh, a common area. It's included in the access and utility easement, but instead of being on someone's lots, it's just a common area. That makes sense, Clark. 
Yeah, I, I neglected to mention though that this is uh, again one of the uh, one of the uh, first few developments again that we've actually sent for uh, fire review uh, compliance prior to the meeting, and I and I neglected to say that you also have in your in your file and exhibit from our fire marshal that you know did see the plat and did uh, uh, found it to be uh, acceptable. <coughs> Is this a, this is the third time we've seen this project, Rick? Yes. Yes. I, I believe, uh, and, yes, and again, just to review for, and I, I, I think Garrett and Clark were both here uh, when we looked at it last time. But the reason that it was kicked back was strictly the density you uh, issue um, based on the acreage, and so that's been addressed. Uh, I, I don't think anything else is really changed or created another conflict so um you know assuming we reduce the number of units on the lot uh they've corrected the problem yes in uh in in, in staff's opinion and uh, uh our reviewing engineer yeah they they are in compliance now we do have a gas we do have another gas uh our gas department's been been a lot more active here uh in, looking at these things anyway. So they, they also just have another uh, requirement that uh, just simply complying with chapter 21 uh, with, with respect to, to gas utility design. That's actually pretty standard. They put that yeah, on almost it, it every is. subdivision plan. But again, since, it, since he does call it out there, I just wanted to, I wanted to point it out. Usually it used to just be an approved, but um, like I said, I, I, just, I did want to call it out. Anybody have more questions on this a project? Bit different. Like I said, there's a requirement that any any of these developments comply with that. So, anyway. Questions, thoughts? Anybody have anything else or have a motion? Does the motion need to have anything about the gas department on it? No, not really. I just it, it they they didn't use to to write that language out, so it's just uh, it's I just wanted to point it out. That is, it's a requirement that they comply with that, and so the uh, the developers know that. I'll make a motion that uh, commission recommends approval on FPLT Plat Request two zero two five three five Rock Cottages Townhomes Lot One Block One Units One through Twenty Eight and Lot One Block Two. Thank you, Nick. Do I have a second? No, I'll second. Thank you. Call the roll. Nick Lorette? Yes. Clark Smith? Yes. Garrett Kipke? No. And Robert Tit? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And uh, at this time, we'll close the items for consideration, move on to item five, planning and zoning commission comments and items for future consideration. Uh, did anybody have anything to add to that section? We do not at this point. Okay, well, if we're all done, uh, go ahead and call meeting adjournment. Thank you. Thanks guys. Everybody have a safe Halloween. Have a good you night. Too. Good night, thank you.